Hey guys, I have some fun projects for you today. I can't wait for you to see them. I upcycled a cool thrifted sign that I just love with a little bit of decoupage paper and paint. It was so easy to do. And then I took some bottles that were from Spices and I took all the labels off and I created some really cool primitive decor. Then as you may have seen in a short that I put out recently, I got a new bandsaw and I've been cutting out shapes like crazy. One of the shapes is a chicken and I love doing these chickens and making them up. So I thought I'd show you how I do some fall decor with that cutout. So let's get started because there's a lot to show you. I thrifted this seashells sign not too long ago from Goodwill for $4 I believe. And I don't think it's ever been used, at least not with the hangers, because they still have the little cardboard on them. So I decided that I was going to bring it home and do something with it. So I took off the hangers in the back because I'm going to be using this going the other way instead of the way that they have it. So I'm going to go vertical with it. And so I took that off and I heated up the little seashell or the star there and I took it off with the heat gun and then there was a little crack in the wood so I went ahead and put some glue in it and then I let my something heavy sit on it for a while. I wiped it down and now I'm going to tape off the edges because I don't want to get any paint on it. Now I'm going to go over this with I think I did two coats of this white it may have been three coats or two and a half uh, with my Rust-Oleum, not my Rust-Oleum. It is my Diamond Hard Ivory paint that I got from Tractor Supply. So I did two coats, let it dry. And now I'm going to take my crackle stamp and I'm going to stamp that onto my sign. I like this look underneath my decoupage paper, which is what I'm going to do with this. And it does show up in some spots, so I think it's really cool. So I went really crazy with this. I just stamped it all over, and we're going to see what it looks like at the end. So I got this paper from a viewer. My friend Paige messaged me and wanted to send it to me. This is from Roy Cycled Paper, and I'll have a link down in the description if I can find it so that you can pick it up if you want. It's a nice big paper and it's great quality paper too. So I'm going to just do part of this paper on here because obviously it won't, the whole thing won't fit. So I laid my sign on top of where I wanted to cut my paper, used a pencil and just traced out exactly where I wanted to go. And I made it a little bit when I cut it, I cut on the inside of my pencil marks so that it would be a little bit smaller than my sign um, because of the little edges on it. So I cut that out, got it to fit exactly, and now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and Mod Podge that onto, in just little sections, onto my sign. I do this in sections, it's a lot easier to handle, and then if you need to maneuver it or change it or do anything like that, you can do that. So I just used my hand and it worked so well with this paper. It's a great quality. Uh, I did, however, start using just a baggie, like a plastic bag, to uh, help get the wrinkles and bubbles out of it. I wasn't, um, I, I, I wasn't having a problem with it, but I wanted to make sure I got those out and I didn't want to overwork my paper. So here you can see I have my little baggie and I'm just using that instead of my fingers. So I just did it in three sections, a little bit at a time, put a little Mod Podge, and then rubbed it down so it really was down well. And then it had slats in it, so I decided to take a razor knife after it dried for a little bit and cut that so that the slats would show up. I think that looks really good. It gives it a rustic look to it, and I really like how that came out. So I just cut it with a razor knife and then I took Mod Podge on a brush and ran it down in the cracks and that way it would stick down to the inside and it didn't, I didn't want it to rip on me so that worked really well. 
Then I took my brush and just started adding Mod Podge over the top to seal it in and make sure all my edges were down really well. Now because I want to give this a little uh, age and make it look rustic, I'm taking some of my antique wax and going around just the edges really close to the side of the sign and I go all the way around top bottom sides and just do a little swirling and just dabbing and put a little bit on there. And this is after the Mod Podge dries. So now I'm taking some jute rope and I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a edging along, along the inside of the sign. That way where the decoupage paper and the sign start and end, I can have a nice row of the jute rope. I think it finishes it off really nicely and it goes along with the rustic look of this sign. recently emptied a, one of these spice bottles, they're glass, and I think they're the organics maybe, or organic spice, and I set it, washed it, set it aside, and I said, well, maybe when I empty out some more, I'll be able to uh, use them and for something, and I happened to go to the free shed at the dump, and there was two sitting there. Uh, or actually there was three, but one of them that I just showed you, it didn't have a lid on it and I want lids on mine. So I took some of my, uh, labels that I have made you can purchase them on my Etsy shop link down in the description. And I printed some of those off and I cut out three of them to go on my bottles. So I removed the stickers or labels that were on them originally. I took some Mod Podge and I added the label and then Mod Podged over them. So I wanna get the labels on and dry before I go and do the next step and I'll explain that in just a moment why I do that. Now while those are drying, I'm gonna take the lids in a separate little dish and I'm going to paint them black. I think I only did one coat on these. I don't care if they're not fully coated. I want this to look primitive and rustic and not perfect. So. I just did those and set them aside. Now that the labels are dry, I can go on to my next step. Now I let those labels dry because I'm going to be putting Grubby Mix on the wet Mod Podge that I put on these glass jars. Now if you had the label that was still wet, your Mod Podge, uh, I'm sorry, your, your spices would stick to the label. So you wanna make sure that they're dry unless you want a lot of the spice mix to stick to that. You won't be able to see the label if you let it stick, so uh, it works really well if you let it dry first, and it doesn't take very long. So now I'm just going to coat all around my label. I make sure that I get up close and actually even on the edges of the label so that it looks like it's just grubbied right on there. So this is a grubby little jar, and you could still use it for spices if you wanted to or whatever you wanted. You could add buttons to it or needles or um, you know sewing stuff or anything anything that you wanted that would fit in these little jars I did some of these before and they were baby jars but they weren't the small ones they were the the double jars and these labels fit perfectly on those as well so I went all the way around took my grubby mix and then just drizzled it on the top and it sticks really well so you just coat that in a nice even coat and then just put it on there. This works so well. I do have a video on how I make my grubby mix. You could just use your uh, cinnamon or whatever you like to use for grubby mix. Mine is a heavily textured one with extra coffee in it so that I get some nice big bumps and it turns very dark once you seal it and I really like it that way. But you certainly don't have to do it that way. 
So now that I let it sit, oh, probably 30 minutes or so, I like to let it dry for a bit, I'm gonna go back in and seal it. Now you don't have to do this part if you don't mind getting some of the, the mix, you know, every time you touch it, it's gonna come off a little bit and things like that. And I sell this stuff in my booth and I also have it on my Etsy shop where I ship it and I don't want the spices to come off. So I like to seal it and I also like how it looks once the Mod Podge is on there and dries. It turns nice and dark and you can see all those wonderful coffee granular pieces in it and it just looks so grubby and grungy and I just love the look. So you just pat the Mod Podge on there and there you go. See how nice and dark that is and it just comes out so cool. Now you could double grubby these if you wanted to. You could uh, put some grubby mix on, let it dry, and then do another batch of grubby mix on the top and make it nice and thick. That's totally up to you. So once everything was dry, I'm just going to add my lids and then take some little homespun pieces that I ripped off and make little ties on the front. And then I have some little black buttons that I'm gonna go ahead and attach those with as well, right to the middle. And these little jars are all finished. I said in the beginning I got a new toy a bandsaw and it helps me cut out these pieces and I love cutting out these little chickens and crows and all different things so this is replacing one that was 40 plus years old it was my father-in-law's and I ran it till it was worn out and it was pretty worn out when I got it actually so um, we've kept it going for quite a while but now it's time to invest in a new one and this one works so good I did so many pieces in just a few hours I was so excited about it so I cut those out I sprayed it black I sanded it down and then I added some antique wax over it and sealed it up and turned those uh, raw edges brown and now I'm taking the base of my little chicken that I'm going to use and I'm giving that a coat of black as well I'm going to do that all over just one coat i think this is waverly ink paint and we're going to let that dry and then we're going to go in and give it a sand around the edges Now, like I did with the chicken, I'm adding the antique wax after I sand it, and this browns up all those raw edges and gives it a nice stained look underneath without staining it first. And it also enriches that black paint and seals it really nicely. So I just put that on and then I'm wiping it back and getting it all cleaned off. There we go. Now I'm gonna use a dowel and set my chicken on there. So I use a drill bit that's just a little bit bigger than my dowel. I'm gonna drill a hole into my little wood piece. Now you don't have to do this part. You could attach the chicken right to the little piece of board that I'm drilling right there. Um, and I think I got these, this might be a Hobby Lobby, but I think they sell them at the uh, Dollar Tree also if you wanted to uh, save a little bit of money and go there or you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you, you could certainly use those as well. 
I'm pretty sure that's where I got this one. Or it might be a Dollar Tree one. Who knows? But anyway, I'm going to... Uh, I did a hole in the base, and now I'm doing a hole in the bottom of my chicken. I just checked out where I thought I wanted him to sit. And I put a little hole in the bottom so that I could put that on. So I'm just going to do a little dry fit. Put that on, and then I'll take it off and add some glue and put it back once I'm ready for it to be permanent. Now I'm taking some antique wax and just going to make this little uh, piece of wood um, a dowel <laughs> uh, I'm, and I'm just going to make it look stained so that it matches the rest of the chicken. So I just wipe that down and now I have this garland that I got on clearance a while back and I picked it up knowing that I would do something with it for fall decor. So I'm going to take it apart. It has about six little pieces and I think I paid around $15 for this garland. So I think it works out to be a little over $2 a piece for each of these little uh, flower uh, little pieces that I broke off. So it's, it's not too bad of a cost to put this together. So I just wrapped it around my, my dowel and glued on the base. And now I'm going to take a little bit of my floral wire because it's thin and you can't really see it and just wrap it around one of the little stems on my arrangement there. And I'm going to tie that on so that it stands up nicely instead of using a bunch of glue that might not stay. So just twisting it on there so that it will stay really well. Now, if you can't cut out your own um, chickens, I have a link down in my description to 24 Hour Crafts and you can buy chickens from them that are already cut out. They're not thick like this one. This is from one inch scrap pine, but you can uh, get little thin ones and it would work just as well and they wouldn't be as heavy. So it'd be easier to get them to, to, to stick to something really well um, and to stand up. So. Don't be afraid if you don't have a bandsaw or you can't cut them out yourself. So I added a little bit of Spanish moss and now I have this pull bow it's called and this came from burlapfabric.com and I'll put a link again down in the description uh, on how to pick those up. These are really cool, beautiful bows and they're really easy to do. So they come wrapped flat and on each package it shows you the directions on how to make this bow fluff up. Now wait till you see the magic in this. It's a uh, piece of ribbon that's threaded through all of this uh, fabric here, or this ribbon, and you just pull on the two pieces together and it just, see how it just makes that bow? It's so cool. And you just keep pulling until they're all together and it stops, and then you just tie it so that it will stay together. And look how cool that is, just by pulling that string, it's so cool. You get 12 in a package, and um, they sent these to me, and they're fabulous little bows, and I've been waiting to use them on something, and once I got these crows, sorry, these chickens done, I've done crows too, um, these chickens done, um, I couldn't wait to put them down on the base around my flower arrangement. It's a the perfect um, piece for this. Another option if you didn't want to use the bows that I have or you can't find them I got these at the Dollar Tree and they're in the fall decor right now different little flowers and made out of burlap and they're just all different shapes and sizes and I thought they were beautiful and I thought they would look great as well hope you enjoyed my rustic primitive fall decor and if you did let me know down in the comments wh which one was your favorite if you haven't already don't forget to like share and subscribe and check down in the description for any links to 
items that I used and to products that you can find elsewhere. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Thank you.